we're back. You ready for some more questions? You got all of them. I think, yeah, I think so. I think the good thing is these are questions that we've heard a lot of the last a lot. We've four, had three, two, one them. years yeah. as, this, as this journey has changed. Especially so, as we've kind of come out on the internet with our story, oh, with your story, crazy. with our whole family. I feel so old on, on the board. internet. <laughs> well, we're getting it figured out. But yes, I am ready for more questions. Okay. You lay them on me. Well, here we go. So we got the kids on board. Mm-hmm. You got the kids on board. You got me on board with this crazy keto lifestyle Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people would be very interested to know like how did that happen I think they they would all probably prefer to have their entire families and everyone in their lives on board with them and if you just want to walk through you know you were doing your journey and you were doing all the keto uh foods and meals and things for yourself but then you were also keeping up with keeping all of us fed with standard American diet for almost two and a half three years two and a half years yeah and then we kind of made that switch. And so what led up to that and what kinds of things did you notice made it easier mm-hmm. to do? How did, how did you do that? Oh, <laughs> I think that this one is a really, really good one, especially if you're out there and you're going, but my spouse isn't doing it, but mm-hmm. my kids don't want to eat the food that I'm making, but no one's on board with me. Um, I did what I needed to do for me for two and a half years. I made the decisions that I needed to make for what went on my plate and what made me feel my best for two and a half years. At that time, I probably would have believed you would have been able to convince me that we did not have the budget, nor did I have the capacity Mm -hmm. mentally or otherwise to do this for all of us. Right. And so I got to the point, I kind of kept my head down and I was super focused and super just like in the zone with what I was doing. I started my Instagram Um, And I'm trying to remember, I think my first post, I had lost 63 pounds. So I was 63 pounds down for a long time. I I kind of updated that number as I let Instagram go on that whole journey with me. Mm -hmm. And at the time it was called Mary's Fat Macros. So it was all about my health journey, my weight loss, but it was a play on Mary's Fat. Like, because Mary's Fat, Mary's always been fat, Mary's Fat. And so it was Mary's Fat macros and it was about really understanding and being purposeful with what I was doing with my food in order to lose weight. Part of um, my journey also was that I didn't exercise. So I was doing this all with food. And so it wasn't that I didn't understand the power of food, obviously, but I had the energy and I had the influence to do it with me at that time. Mm. And so I kept my head down and I did two meals. I did two meals, every meal I did my food and a lot of times my eating window would in earlier and I would make everybody else's dinner and I would you'd you'd be done eating at four and we'd all get hungry at six Mm -hmm. yeah and I'd make dinner and I'd sit down you were committed you were committed at that point in your journey you were committed to fasting Mm -hmm. and so there was no snacking or eating for you no this and I wasn't gonna eat what y'all were eating when I think about that like what I can't even imagine what that could have looked like that we would have been like hey mom make us food Two hours after you've already committed to being done eating, you're on your journey. I just, I don't even know how we did, why we did that. <laughs> but it's what we all needed at the time. Right. And right. I, I wasn't, I say this all the time. Like where people are like, you know, do you wish you had found keto earlier? Do you wish, you know, that do you ever feel like, oh my gosh, if only I'd known. I wasn't ready until I was ready. Mm-hmm. I wasn't ready until I was ready. I hit rock bottom before I started climbing my way back up. And so to expect you to be ready before you were ready wasn't fair either. Mm -hmm. And so it really is like, if you're at the point that you're like, but I'm all in, but like my husband's totally seeing my results. My spouse is totally seeing everything that I'm doing. Yeah. For you, that's your story. That's your journey. And I only had it control at that point of me. The only person I could control was me and what I was doing. And at that point, I had to just say, I'm going to control what I can control and I'm going to do the things that I can do. And I'm still going to take care of my family. And that was the choice we made. I wish we did not make that choice for as long as we made it. I wish that there was a time faster or sooner that we could have changed things up the way they are now because my life is so much easier than Mm -hmm. it was when I was trying to be on this journey while you're ordering Domino's pizza. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to be on this journey. Not just ordering it, but opening it and eating it Mm -hmm. three hours into your fast. Yeah. Yeah. And I, there was times, there was a couple of times and I was, I don't feel like I got hangry or out of control. Like I knew why I was doing what I was doing, but I'm going to walk away from this one. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to head had upstairs. This, you left the room. And I, I'm not there yet that right. I can just hang out. But there was a lot of meals. I sat down at the table mm-hmm. and I wasn't eating. We still, and, still participate. Yes, right. absolutely. Sat right. down as a family. If you're not at that point yet, walk away. It's yeah. okay. 
And hopefully your family can at least understand that. But I did get to the point that I said, I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's bigger and more important and more purposeful than the spaghetti you're eating right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it was that for, you know, I started this in September of 2018. And it was not until, oh, it was not until April of 2021 Mm -hmm. that you were on board. Right. That is a pretty penny of a time. Yeah. That is a, that is a hot minute. Three years. Oh my, well, yeah. Get, Almost get there. Years. Two, over two and a half. Yeah. And so I was kind of taking a look at everything that I was doing. And what happened is I started to share my story. Mm-hmm. I started to share on Instagram. I started to do some before and after pictures. I think some of those before and after pictures got a little jarring to you. Yeah. It was really interesting that you were like, that wasn't you. I really didn't. I still, I still can't look at them and think that wasn't you. You've yeah. always been you. <laughs> and yeah, just this really is effective. Something's mm. really happening here. I started my Instagram, which led to a couple who was launching a keto magazine, um, reaching out to me and I got to be part of kind of the launch team for that. And they wanted to share my story initially. And then I helped kind of on the back end of the magazine itself. And I met a couple other people within that kind of, you know, team um, that led me to uh, an app called Clubhouse, Mm -hmm. which is an audio only social media app. And the thing that I think was impactful about my Instagram pretty quickly was that my message was different and it was far less dogmatic, far less black and white, far less um, shamey. Shamey. Yeah. Than a lot of the accounts. I love you. I love you. He was. was. Than a lot of um, Instagram accounts especially were and was very much so um, just a different kind of message and far more of me kind of saying, this is what I'm walking through right now. But you almost This is my journey right now. You wrote it in love. You wrote it as if our kids were going to be reading it someday. I did. Yeah. And I think that that writing process was very cathartic for me. I think I was able to say what's really going on here. And I was able to start kind of like letting that come out of my fingers a little bit. And it came out, I was like, Ooh, Ooh, that's what I'm feeling right now. That's what I'm dealing with right now. That's the thing that I have to unpack. That's the conversation I need to go have. And there were some conversations that I had because I wrote something that I had never really thought consciously before. Yeah. All of a sudden I saw the words and went, wow, I've been carrying that for 15 years or I've been carrying that for 25 years. And there were some conversations with people I had to have and say, you know, this happened with us 20 years ago and I've carried the pain of that conversation this whole time. And that's not on you. And so any feelings or bitterness or hurt or anger that I had towards people in my life because of a situation that happened because, you know, of my body, because of the journey that I was on when I was not on a weight loss journey, when I was just on a journey in my body, I had to have conversations that wouldn't have come about if I hadn't been writing. Mm. And I think for me, the writing process was really important. It was a big part of my life for a long time growing up was writing was an outlet for me. And it hadn't been for a long time. It was something that I kind of shut off and stopped doing. And so opening that back up was really important. But through that writing, people kind of started saying, wow, like, can we have conversations with you? Can we feature you here? Can we, Mm. you know, share your story here? And so I got kind of pushed, shoved into the Clubhouse app, and I started speaking there. And it was one of those things, I am what I call an so out, out This loud. community, what's the, what's the name of the Clubhouse Club that we okay. just love? Keto for the Soul yes. is the one that opened me up to the Clubhouse world. It led to other clubs like Keto Saved My Life, mm-hmm. all these incredible opportunities that I got to start speaking. And um, we and are sharing. both and yeah. sharing. We are both what I, what we kind of call out loud downloaders. <laughs> so when we're talking, Andy and I process a lot of what's going on up here because our brains are going in so many directions all the time. And we'll talk about that maybe eventually too, how um, our neurodivergency has impacted our journey um, and some of the things that we've had to discover and figure <laughs> out and systematize and find and understand about ourselves and how our brains worked in order to understand even some of the binge eating some of um, the shame cycles that I would go through, some of the the lack of ability to focus and follow through in a way that brought me a lot of shame for a long time and kind of, you know, figuring, figuring out how to make that work. So I don't see, see, that was that. You just saw that out loud. I went down that rabbit hole. I'm coming back down here (laughs) now is that I started speaking and as somebody who kind of processes out loud, I started sharing and somebody would say, you know, well, what about this? And I would give an answer 
And it would be a light bulb moment for me. <laughs> it would be something that once I said it out loud and I said, actually, and my wheels got turning and I, it kind of came out of my mouth before I even had time to process the thing beforehand. And it was life changing. And going through all of that, all of that whole process um, led you kind of to popping into that space from time to time. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about, you know, I always talk about the feelings side of this, the journey, the the shame, the guilt, things that you had never felt about your body. Yeah. And not look at him. I mean, did he just, <laughs> that was not a shared experience for us. But you got on to Clubhouse and you heard some of our friends start speaking about the the reality of what's in our food mm -hmm. and the nutritional understanding of, you know, how our ancestors ate and the understanding of how our body metabolizes sugar and how carbs become sugar, like literally in our mouth and mm -hmm. all these things that you're going, that makes logical sense to me. And it was months into me being on clubhouse that you went, I think there's something to this. <laughs> it wasn't my weight yeah, loss. Right. It wasn't my before and after pictures. Right. It wasn't me processing out loud and talking about, you know, the importance of the self-love journey. What? None of that. None of that. You went, this makes logical sense to me after getting more information, mm -hmm. after getting more scientific understanding of what ketosis is. Right. And I was just thinking that you were giving up carbs and sugar because you've always been fat. And this set of food that you're eating now seems to be rectifying that, right. but it wasn't an understanding of like what food choices do to our bodies. Which I think for me, I must have needed that logical connect the dots mm -hmm. kind of framework. I got that in a format that I was able to accept it in. Yeah, I, I can't say that anybody else needs it exactly like that. No. I probably just got what I needed when I was ready to hear it. You weren't ready until you got ready. <laughs> and you had packed on me in a way that you had never experienced in your mm -hmm. life. But still at the point, it was hideable. Yeah. It wasn't so much that it, it was super impacting it was, I could anything. rationalize it away. Yeah. But it was the first time you had to say, when next time you get pants, I need you to go up to this we size. We had a couple of those. I was and convinced you were just drying my clothes too much for about a year. Literally, <laughs> this conversation. <laughs> like, maybe we need to hang dry my clothes. Why are you drying my clothes so tight? <laughs> So that was fine. You weren't ready until you yeah. were ready. And yeah. so in about April of 2021, you kind of came to me and you said, I want to do this with you. Mm -hmm. I want to share in this lifestyle with you. I don't want you cooking something separate for me. I think that it, you, and you kind of said, you're like, I'm in my thirties. I got to start doing something now because I don't want to have to do something in my fifties. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be chasing health backwards. Mm -hmm. And I went, okay. So we started cooking for two. All of a sudden, it was like dinner for two, meals right. for two. And I was learning and all, those, all the things that I was also like saving when I would cook, in, you know, <laughs> save, cook things for two. Normally, all of a sudden, those things were getting eaten yeah. at the same time. So transition. It was a... It so was you a cut your ribeye in half and you eat one half and you're thinking you're going to have the other half for dinner or something. Uh -huh. I would just come along and eat the yes. other half. Yeah. And you were kind of like in, out, in, out, yes. foot in. Like which, I'm going to eat got, the ribeye. I was extra hungry all the time. Yes. By being in and out of the carbs yes. constantly. And yeah. it took a little while. And you also literally were like, well, why is this? And I got really good at understanding the science mm -hmm. and the logic in a way that you could hear me. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of started to slow things down and explain things and say, okay, like let's logically look at this. And had to do it in a way that wasn't so feely feely. Right. And I think that, that was an important part that I had to learn to give you what you needed from that conversation. Wait, and are we having a, like a fitness weight loss talk or is this like a marriage talk? Mm. What? Oh, I, <laughs> I feel do. like a lot of these principles we've learned are super applicable across many areas. Absolutely. Yeah. And when we kind of share more about our background and who we are and what we've done with our lives, it makes sense. <laughs> and like make it make sense. It makes sense. Yeah. But we'll get there another day. Um, but so yeah, I mean, I think making I had to change the way I shared mm -hmm. and what you needed to hear. And I had to understand what you were asking for when you were asking those questions. And there was times that it was kind of like, why do you need to know? Like, this is such a <laughs> nuisance. But I had to realize that you were asking for what you needed yeah. to make it make sense here so you could do things differently. Right. And so when I didn't have the answers, when I couldn't give you what you needed, you at that point then had a place that you could go and say, mm -hmm. okay, I can ask this question and I'm going to get a room full of keto nutrition people or mm -hmm. keto fitness people that are going to be able to say, actually, this is how this works yeah. in a way that made sense to you, that mm -hmm. made you go, okay, like I got this. And so 
We kind of bought in. It became dinner for two. And it kind of got to that point where we kind of got in love with the science of it a little bit. We kind of nerded out over it. We (laughs) kind of started to understand more about, you know, really whole food choices and why we would make the choices of foods that we would make. And we kind of started to make better, like higher grade food choices Mm -hmm. where, um, you know, I, I've talked about it before. I was, it was a lot of McDoubles in the beginning with no buns Mm. and with no ketchup, no ketchup, no bun. McDouble, no ketchup, no bun. I did a lot of that in the beginning. Or if it was still breakfast. Sausage McMuffin with egg, no muffin. No muffin, yeah. I did a lot of that. I ate still not great food choices, but the choices I had at hand in 2018 with the understanding I had Mm -hmm. with what I knew at that time, and it was... It was literally, I'm, I'm going to get rid of the bread. I'm going to get rid of the bread. I'm going to get rid of the bread and the sugar. I mean, you had that's to start somewhere. I, that's where I started. Yeah. And so yeah, the ribeyes didn't come into play for a long time. The I mean, you've always loved ribeyes. I love steak. No, but that, was like just, a, that was like an anniversary dinner, not a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> like it was like, you know what I mean? I did. I always loved it. But it was, not, it was like scallops on a Wednesday for lunch. I'm yeah. like, who is this girl? Yeah. But it was a whole lot of fun. I always say, I'm like, this is the bougiest diet on the planet. It's so good. So bougie. Yes. If you were at Capitol Grill... And somebody said, do you want to get a burger or a sandwich? You're going, I'm in a steakhouse, yeah. ma'am. Like, give me that give me that steak. Add that lobster tail. Add those scallops. Mm-hmm. Add that um, Oscar to the top with that crab meat and that creamy, delicious fat sauce. Um, give me the bacon wrapped asparagus. Give me those Brussels sprouts. Like, you're, at, you're eating the bougiest side of the menu you wouldn't even look at that side of the menu at a restaurant like that but then, I, feel, those- I feel like we have to we have to have this every time we say this i think it's important that because of those higher quality food choices we did have this discussion mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. cost like is this diet going to cost us is yeah. this lifestyle are we going to be paying more and some of the things that went into that were our future health care costs oh absolutely being being aware that pay if we for don't, food now yeah. or health care later if we don't, uh, if we don't take care of it now, yeah. it was going to cost us greatly in the future. At some point, like that piper was going to get paid. But I think also, especially with foods that keep your body in a state of ketosis, we are not as hungry. Yeah, we don't get snacky and cravings, and we don't go. It is and not reach. three square meals a day. No, it doesn't. No, I, I don't. And we've know. been looking at, especially these last couple of days, when we've been able to kind of hone in on and narrow in on what we're eating. We're going. Mm-hmm. All right, we ate at twelve thirty, and we ate at seven. And that's, we're good. It, that, it feels satiated and full. So slightly more expensive, but there's no snacks. There was no snacks today. There was and no this, breakfast. There and was the no snacks that we had before when we would get cookies and Oreos and Twizzlers and all the stuff mm-hmm. that just adds up. We, our Reese's budget was, cups. yep. That was to our, be honest, it was family size bags of Reese's peanut butter cups. That was the change that I kept in my room. room. Yeah. I remember. I get a bag for you and a bag for me. Like what? Thirteen yeah. eighty eight at Walmart. What's oh, the family size? I'm trying yeah. to remember. You could get two ribeyes at Walmart for a price of a bag of Reese's. Yep. So we really did that math, and it was difficult to accept it. I think in the at beginning. First. Oh yeah. And I think now that we've done it for a while, it it just wouldn't make sense to go back. If y'all have looked at your like healthcare premiums, also like that <laughs> shirt, that'll do it. That'll do right. the tr- that'll do the trick. Stay like, healthy. Right? Buy buy the steak, and if you can't buy the steak. Buy the chicken. If you can't buy the chicken, buy the pork chops. Yeah. Whatever you got to do. We did. And if you can't, get the McDouble. No ketchup, no bun, if that's where you're at right now. We did that. We started there. I think that's one of the things, too, is the shame... Oh, oh! I can go into a whole word. What what was the question? How how we got the kids to do this? How did we get the family on board? The shame that goes into not doing it good enough. Mm -hmm. Not doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. Not doing it with grass-fed meats. Obviously, if you can do that, do that. If you can do a lobster tail, do that. If you can do, if you're at a point right now that you go, what I can do is the fast food I was always doing without a bun. Start there. Start there. Do what you can. Get to the point that you go from eating six times a day. That's what's recommended still, right? Like that's a whole thing still. Eat six small meals a day. That you go to eating two real meals a day with whole food. And all of a sudden you can start to upgrade that quality. It was very much so. I'm just like, Some of the things that literally were instrumental to me losing 125 pounds, I probably wouldn't eat now. Yeah. But they got me there. Mm -hmm. They got me enough time with enough results that I started getting enough information that I changed the food that was going in my body. Mm -hmm. But I had to do what I could do with what I knew where I was. And I think that that's an important part of this is that the shame's got to – in this whole world, in this whole – 
it's a reason that there's part of me that goes, I don't know how I feel about being a keto account when you're not going to get a food plan from me. You are not going to hear, you know, I'm not going to do side by sides of, of the difference between grass fed steak and Walmart steak. Get the Walmart steak. Do whatever, do what you got to do to make the choices long enough that you have enough information that you start making better and better and better and better choices. If you knew everything you needed that I, if I knew, I'm just gonna say me, if I knew everything I knew day one that I know now, I would have been over overwhelmed into paralysis. If you'd been presented with all that information. All of it at once. It, it, would, have, it would have turned you off of it. it would, I would have been paralyzed by yeah. understanding food windows and insulin responses and ketosis and metabolic health and so you didn't do that you didn't do that to me you, no. we, we had very small conversations yes. and even with our kids we've had these small moments where we explain a concept or we say this is what we're thinking mm-hmm. do you guys want to do this we've had just little moments here and there that we tried to just you know cast a sprinkle. line out yes yeah. and just sprinkle, sprinkle information right cast especially with seeds. our detailed kids that are that think like you we have kids with Amy's <laughs> brain they go but why But why? I'm like, well, let's ask that question. Let's figure out the why on that. And then I have kids that understand kind of the emotional side of this. Mm -hmm. And you got to get in where you can get in. Get in where you fit in. Whatever that is, you've got to do what works for you. And you've got to say yes to the things that are easy for you to say yes to day one and work up to the rest. Mm -hmm. And so you came on board. That's, That's the next part of this. Andy comes on board. And you start learning a lot more. You start understanding a whole lot more about what food does in our body. You start understanding a lot more about how food has changed Mm -hmm. throughout the last 50 years, especially. There was a statistic that we heard at one point that the average eight-year-old has consumed as much sugar as the average American adult did in their lifetime in 1975. And you started saying, where's all the sugar coming from? Where is it? And we actually, we talked to a couple of our friends that um, live overseas. They do not live here. And they go, your, your bread tastes like cake. And we go, no, our cake tastes like cake. Our bread tastes like bread. Like, no, no, no. Your bread tastes like cake. Why is it so sweet? Why do you need it to taste like you're eating your meat between two pieces of cake? Like it was very confusing. (laughs) And I realized I'm like, oh my gosh, like there's, there's, there's sugar in McDonald's French fries. Mm-hmm. There's sugar in like the amount of things that we started turning over the packages and go, where is all this getting into kids at mm-hmm. all of it, all of it, stuff that you think is savory is filled with sugar stuff that you think is, you know, regular meat is filled with sugar. The bacon's filled with sugar. Like we're just going all of it. And so those kinds of things were jarring to you. Yeah. And we kind of started getting revved up. So you get in in April I spoke and was participating in and helping kind of host um, the Keto Orlando Summit in 2021. So it was in August of last year, one year ago. And leading up to that, we were having lots of conversations on Clubhouse. Everyone was excited. We were all meeting in real life for the first time at the Keto Orlando Summit that Erica Bell had hosted for the, the, the two years previous. This was the third, I believe, for her event. The Friday night was a clubhouse meet and greet. This app that we had been using, not only to connect with other keto people, but for you was a space of kind of learning and educating mm-hmm. and getting more understanding of what all this was and why you would choose to do this. Yeah. So we're having more and more and more and more conversations. We're, we're kind of digging making in on friends. all of it. We're making friends. Yeah. But you're kind of going, oh, like there is a lot to this. And so we're going down there. I have this kind of phenomenal story. I got to kind of share who I was and introduce Judith who started Keto for the Soul on Clubhouse. And at that meet and greet, it was a really big moment in my life. And I remember being very humbled and very proud that I got to participate in something so important. And a couple things happened, kind of confluence of events. Um, You looked at me and said, we can't know what we know and set up our kids the way you feel like you were set up growing up. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think there was probably a time that my parents, I love them, I love you, um, saw that I had a food addiction, saw that I was pretty out of control as a child with with sugar, that I was eating zebra cakes and oatmeal cream pies for breakfast, getting on the bus, that I was not choosing whole foods at all, that I was addicted to the stuff in the packages, that the Pop-Tarts, and the sodas and sodas, yeah, the 
cherry sprites. Man, the cherry sprites. This the chocolate dipped Sun Belt granola bars to me were a health food. Mm. I was eating a granola bar. It was like, well, did you get breakfast? I'm like, yeah, I got a granola bar and pretty much a few oats rolled in a bunch of sugar syrup. and just. Literally, the, and it, they used to be bigger. Yeah. They're little now. Like, I, I remember getting them for our kids and being yeah. like, where'd the rest of these grow? <laughs> they used to be like this. Yeah. And that's how I ate. And I remember going, this is what's in the house. There's Bunny Tracks ice cream and Moose Tracks ice cream in the fridge. And everyone's concerned that I'm gaining weight as rapidly as I am or mm-hmm. that I'm so mm-hmm. out of control with food. But this is what's here. And dinners always included a side of rice or mac and cheese or bread but or bread that, and butter and dessert des- right i have a dessert i have a dessert family y'all and i but part of my claim to fame with my weight loss is i eat dessert almost every day i still love sweets but it is there were fresh baked cookies sitting on the counter when you got off the school bus there were um you know lots of ice cream nights lots of desserts at night lots of real pies and real cakes and um Fudge, gooey butter cake. I'm just thinking, okay. ooh, sorry. Right, so let's keep saying track. I know, I know. But I'm going through all the you things. You don't want to trigger anybody. <laughs> I was, sorry, sorry, y'all. I was surrounded by that, but for some reason, everybody had an opinion or a feeling or even a fear is what I might call it. As a parent looking mm-hmm. at it now, it was probably a fear about what was happening with me. But you can't take the moose tracks away from the four other kids that are in the mm-hmm. house. I had seven siblings total. And with all my steps, seven of them, you can't punish everybody else because Mary's out of control. So I just got more and more and more out of control. I just got better hiding it. Mm. I got more ashamed. I got to the point that I was, you know, trying to make sure nobody saw. They saw. They saw. And I just thought, I'm like, you know, we're eating this way. And no, it was not me. I did not think any of this. I had no intention of transitioning the kids to a low carb lifestyle. You looked at me and said, you spent 30 years struggling with the food you were eating. Mm. This is what we're eating now because we know better now. We yeah. understand. We know what we know a mm-hmm. little bit. And I don't want to set up our kids for A, a relationship with food that's based on dieting. This is mommy and daddy's diet food. And this is your good food. Right. A. But B, knowing what we know about how those foods affect children. Mm-hmm. And I think that one of the other things that you, I, I, I remember the conversation. I remember the conversation where you said, I think we need to switch this. I have no this. memory. So you got to say, I'm learning here. I'm with you guys. I'm, I'm reliving, reliving this story it through It really does right have a really, really bad remember. memory on, on <laughs> these kinds of things. <laughs> Ask him what, you know, the first a hundred digits of pi are. Oh, I got, he's got it. Yeah. Stop. Don't you dare. <laughs> he knows. He has a memory for the most random things, not for kind of the, these things. <laughs> I replay these things like it's a video in my brain. Your brain does not do that. So I'm waiting for the end of this story with rapt attention. I want to know, what did I say? <laughs> I want to know. Dr. Raquel in our room said that um, type two diabetes used to be called adult onset diabetes. Mm-hmm. And when children started getting it rapidly, and all of a sudden there was a cascade failure of type two diabetes in children that they transitioned the name from adult onset diabetes to type two diabetes because mm-hmm. it was such a plague within children. Mm-hmm. And she said that, and there was this little moment of food hasn't always been this way. Mm-hmm. The, the people are like, we grow up eating cakes and we grew up eating, it's like it was literally different wheat. Yeah. Like as crazy as that sounds, the understanding that we had to like go through of like, the grains that made your cake that your mama made, you know, every single night at the table in 1945, are, it's not the same food. The yeah. sugar, like it's just, and the, the stuff that's in the packages especially is meant to make you want more than what you should have. And the, the, the food scientists and what We've they do. We've been biohacked. It's literally, I'm like, yeah. so all of that, so you you kind of said food's not what it was right and you struggled in the 90s they've made it better yeah. they've made it more palatable they've made it more addictive and i don't want to set up our kids thinking that what we do is dieting mm. and what they're doing is normal that the pop tarts are, are are normal food that the eggo waffles are normal food that's i'm just trying to think of some of the stuff that they ate 
And you went, we've got to teach them that whole food is normal food and that the standard American diet is a fad that has been around for 60, 70 years. And for the rest of human history, all of the rest of human existence, they have eaten things that, and I, I, somebody on Clubhouse says that had a mama or grew from the ground. Like it, it just, that's, that's what was normal. That was what was standard for everyone for the rest of them. So it's like this small blip of this fad diet that is the American standard American diet. Everything else, whole food was the rest of it. The problem with so many of the grains and the flours that we use now and the corn that we use now and everything else. And they say, you know, people had bread. People had, you know, you know, bread, you know why aren't you eating bread? People had bread and- 10,000 years or so, yeah. It's not the same bread. Yeah. The, the farming practices, the agricultural practices, all of it. it it's and not it's, any one thing. It's, it's all of it combined. And it's cake. And then they throw sugar in there because it doesn't taste the same. So all of that, you kind of had to have this mm-hmm. conversation. And you said, I think we've got to do something different. Right. And I went. As a parent, once a you parent. know. Once you know, when, when you know that there's trucks that drive down your street, you know, at, at 50 miles an hour, you don't let your toddlers out to cross the street by themselves. Right, and I think for me, as uh, because we know now, we have we can't just not we can't just ignore it. We can't just set up their environment to fail, mm-hmm. basically, and we can't set them up to either both physically fail or mentally fail. Which is why I think the conversation around us saying, "Oh, this is a diet," was potentially could be as damaging. Yeah. Yes, we could be physically healthy, but if we made them feel like like there was something forbidden about what we were doing or, you know, unhealthy for about what they were doing or, or yeah, it's just some kind only, of, you, you only eat this way if you're fat. Right. All yes. of, like so many things that we had to start really, really being purposeful. We mm-hmm. were raising five with tiny language, humans with yes. our language too. We're raising five right. tiny humans who hear everything we say. Mm-hmm. We had to talk even when I was fasting and I was sitting down at the dinner table and a, one of my girls would say, mommy, why can't you eat tonight? Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm choosing not to eat tonight because I have already eaten all my food for the day and I want to feel my very best. If I stop eating a little earlier in the day than you, I get a really good night's sleep and I want to have a great day with you tomorrow. I don't want to sleep bad and be tired. Do you want mommy tired tomorrow? No. I was like, so I had to talk about my body. Also, to reframe. Just I also reframe have something called gastroparesis. Yeah. I literally, <clears throat> sorry, I literally process food slower. Right. And so it kind of sits in there. And so it, that conversation about you listening to your body yes. and giving your body what it needs, we had to be more vocal and more mm-hmm. upfront with those conversations other than just, oh, mommy's trying to lose weight. Yes. Right. And we really wanted their brains in on our process of like, this is why we're doing what we're doing. And these are the great effects that we're going to have as a family because of that. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> I apologize. No, and I think that one of the things that was important with that is that my little girls, my six-year-old, may have kind of noticed that my body was changing, but we made sure to point out all the things that were changing. Mm-hmm. Isn't it cool that mommy feels good enough to be able to keep up? Isn't it cool that mommy was able to you know, walk the entire zoo with you today? That's why mommy's making the choices that I'm, cho- that I'm choosing with my food is because my food makes me feel so good. And food has the, the ability to do that. Food choices have the ability to make you and allow you to feel your best and, and run on all cylinders, so mm-hmm. to speak. And so it was very important that when they said, so you can't have that, we said, oh, no, no, no. Mommy's a full adult, a whole adult. I can make any decision. I could eat cake for breakfast if I wanted to. I am a grown adult. Right. I can have whatever I want. I'm going to choose not to have that. And this is why. And those conversations and how we talked about food were really, really, really important in front of our kids. My whole weight loss journey. Mm-hmm. So it was even like early we on. We started that very early. We, had we didn't say, want to put any shame or guilt or just impart the wrong impression to them. They, mm-hmm. they were blank slates for all we Or that know. my body right. wasn't worthy as right. it was. Or right. I was, it was just, I, the whole goal was to live the life I'd always wanted in my body at its best. And so it wasn't about what my body looked like. It was what a healthy body allowed me to experience. And that was a big thing. we didn't know. We didn't know if it was going to take 13 months at that point to lose all that weight. Or or five years. years, Or five years. Ten years. Didn't care. At that point, I got to the point I did not care. What, how long it took if I knew that this could do it. Mm -hmm. And keto was the first thing that I was able to do where about four, five, six months in, I went, 
this could really do it. Yeah. Like this is what this can actually help the inflammation. You, you this move help from like, hope to belief. Yes. Right. Oh, oh, yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. So that conversation started to change. We kind of you stopped me in my tracks and said, we're going to have to deal with this. So leading up to the Keto Orlando Summit, we had tried to purchase an RV multiple times over a couple months. They were flying off the shelves. Flying off the shelves. Yeah. It was coming out of 2020. People were ready to go. Ready to get out Couldn't of there. Couldn't really fly on planes. They didn't want to fly on planes. Yeah. They didn't want to fly on planes. So the prices of things were skyrocketing. We also like, it was literally like, well, if you can get to this spot in Texas tomorrow, <laughs> we'll hold it for you. <laughs> right. And so we had been trying and trying and trying to make this happen. And it hadn't come together until it did. Right. And you, it was, we were at a, we were at a wedding for my nephew and it was like 1030 at night and you took a 5 a.m. flight on like a little six passenger uh-huh. plane up to a small town in Michigan, Lovington, Michigan, Michigan to go pick yeah. up this RV. And so we picked up a 36 foot class A motor home. It was the smallest size that would fit our family. It's the only thing that we, literally we got to keep getting bigger. There's seven of us. Because <laughs> the babies are getting bigger, not because yeah. there's more kids coming. No. Stop yeah. Don't read into that. Stop it. <laughs> the amount of things that I say that people go, does that mean there's more? No, there's no more babies. No, no, no. Um, and we do, as you guys get to know the Daniels family and these kids, you're going to go, oh, you should have more. And that's <laughs> you should come help raise them then. No, we need a third parent at least. Um, so we picked up this, this RV and it was right before I was flying down to Orlando. Mm-hmm. And so we're kind of going, oh, how are we going to make this happen? Like we're going to this conference. We already have like babysitting set up and whatnot. So we parked the RV, got it, you know, got it home, had started to kind of do some fun stuff. So we like did the wallpaper and did some of the curtains and whatever. We had a, a, maybe a week or two. And then we were flying to Orlando. So we made the decision to have Andy fly back home. This is a dumb one, y'all. This is one of those ADHD. I don't think I would thinkings. do it again. Yeah, I would but do that it was. Again. It's a good story. Why don't you go get all five kids? It's a good story. And drive them by yourself back to Florida from Missouri. From Missouri, so which is like a twenty-four hour drive. We go to Orlando together. We go to the conference. It was a life-changing experience. It was absolutely amazing. Andy flies back to Kansas City, loads up this RV. We had never packed the RV before. We didn't know it takes it takes three days. Yeah. For any of our trips, it takes three full days of pack. Nope. Packs the RV, gets all the kids loaded up, and drives through a hurricane. Pretty much, yeah. It Pretty was downgraded storms. to a tropical storm tropical by the time storm. it reached Tennessee. It was a tropical storm. <laughs> but we, it was a hur- we weren't dangerous about it. Was it was a hurricane. Pulled over when that, you needed to pull over. Yeah, it was a hurricane that got downgraded by the time it got all the way north. <laughs> through a tropical storm, it comes back down to Orlando. Yeah. And we did our first couple month trip mm. all the way through Florida, up through Atlanta. I mean, we made a it was a thing. We, it was our first like real RV tour. Mm-hmm. And it was a really good opportunity. And I think that um, Two Crazy Ketos pointed this out really, really well in an interview that they did with us on YouTube. Um, and what they said, we like, you know, when those life changes happen, if it's the end of the school year, if it's the beginning of summer break or going back to school or mm-hmm. Christmas break or... That these kind of like where the routine's about to change anyways. The natural turning point. Yes. Yeah. So use that as an opportunity to start to implement some of these changes without it feeling quite so jarring. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of went, we're walking away from Orlando. All these incredible sponsors were there. We were still down there. And so some of the fun extra goodies got to come our way. And Erica Bell was good to us. And so we thought, you know, like, you know, the RV's coming down. We're going to have to buy groceries. There's nothing in it right now. It's empty. There's nothing in it. So if we buy low carb tortillas instead of regular tortillas, if we buy low carb bread instead of regular bread, berries and bananas if we buy and avocados, berries, bananas, avocados, if we get nicer turkey breast instead mm-hmm. of the honey thin little round I know you don't like them. I know. <laughs> those, if we buy boar's head or what yeah. I was like, we, we actually can start to kind of just change, not what they're eating, not the meals themselves, mm-hmm. But how we're putting this together. We didn't really make an announcement out of it. We just kind of stocked it with what we had. We stocked it. And there was a ton of keto treats and snacks. Mm -hmm. So we had like monk pack granola bars in there. Mm -hmm. We had keto chow in there. We had like really good stuff. There was, there was really fun. The Ultima Mm -hmm. electrolytes. Yes. The girl, the kids, man, Ultima sponsor our lives, (laughs) man. I'm not trying to be bad. The amount of electrolytes that my kids like to drink they because love it. they're water drinkers. Yeah. Like I have a little girl who literally is like, I got, I, you know, I, I'm about to wrap up my water for the day. Like yeah. she like has her like, 
And they, it is a special treat. We make popsicles out of them. We do all sorts of fun stuff, but for real, for real, um, stocking up on things like that helped so much, but we had a few of those from the conference that we were able to put in there and kind of like, we had like moon cheese and like Mm -hmm. also just yummy, delicious things. And so we just, that's what we stocked the RV with. The granola bars that were in there weren't the Nutri-Green bars. They weren't, they weren't covered in sugar and They weren't chocolate. the things that we were buying at home for mm-hmm. them. They were kind of a new form of that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we would make a big thing of meatballs with mozzarella and Rayo's sauce instead of the Aldi sauce that we had been buying or whatever it might be. And we just served it over green beans, which is our kids' very favorite vegetable, yeah. instead of buying spaghetti noodles. And guess what? It's really hard to boil water in an RV. So we just had to, we just couldn't possibly. So we went ahead and did green beans tonight. Mm -hmm. And we started kind of making these changes and transitions and like little swaps. And it wasn't that the point was for them to be in ketosis. And so I want to, I want to say that too, is that I think I am blown away by my friends who have like legit keto kids. I think that that's amazing and incredible. Um, For us, I was not going to restrict any fruits. Right. The fruit. We the, have like an open door revolving policy on fruit. Literally. If it's a fruit, you can have it. Yes. It shows up <laughs> in our lives. I'm not going to, the amount of movement that I, that my kids have <laughs> changing and saying it's okay to want something sweet and choose yeah. pineapple. They, yeah. And Those they go through of, stages. They'll, yes. they'll eat oranges by the bags and then all of a sudden Nothing. a bag of oranges rots. Well, raspberries, okay. Guess cartons on at a time else. and then the raspberries start <laughs> bolting. Yes. We so, just switch it up, switch right. it up, switch it up. And they love it. And so same thing with veggies. So our kids eat a lot of carrots. Our kids eat sweet potatoes. Our kids eat, I'm trying to think of some of the other they ones. They love green beans. They love yeah. green beans, green beans. Yeah. peppers and onions, those kinds of things. We're not going, oh, you can only have you know this amount of peppers and onions because yeah. of the, the net carbs. None of that. And so it really is about more and more and more whole food choices, which wasn't how it started out. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of the snacks in the beginning. Right. The snacks were important at that point because when we wanted, when the kids said, can I get an ice, you know, can we get an ice cream? Mm -hmm. We said, sure, let's go grab ice cream from the store and have an ice cream party in the RV and watch a movie tonight. And so we just got Rebel. We just got Halo. Halo. We got Enlightened. Whatever it might be. We got ice cream and we did it. But the kids didn't go, this doesn't taste like that. You know, they just, they were thought it was rad that we had an ice cream night Mm -hmm. and we were even able to say, Oh my gosh, well, there's seven of us. There's seven of us going out for ice cream at five bucks a person seems a little crazy. Mm -hmm. Can we go pick three really, can I run into the store, pick three really fun ice creams and we can do them in the, in the car Mm -hmm. and, or in the RV. And so all those kinds of things, those snacks were really important. And so all the people, and I was like, I can be one of them. And I get that, that trash on kind of the keto treats. There's really good ones and there's really not good ones. We know if you turn it over and it says cane sugar, that's probably why, not, that's how, not, don't, how don't keto. do they get to do that? <laughs> I don't know. The amount of things that have tricked us that yeah. we went, Oh, I guess well, that had stuff. In this it. thing that I was like, I've had zero carbs today and I ate this three net carb treat and it kicked me out of ketosis. Like yeah. we, we, those things, it happens. Those Treats though that weren't on the market in 2018 when I started Mm -hmm. that were on the market when our kids went through this whole kind of shift were really important. Allowed us to make it fun, to give them some rewards, to give them, you know, they never felt like they were missing out. It didn't feel like like mommy and daddy got like punished us and took away all our good food. Having high key cookies instead of chips ahoy was really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Is really fantastic. Our kids but they used to devour them mm-hmm. and plow through them in a way that like a lot of that stuff will go into our shelves and they they can access it and it sits on our shelf. Yeah. Like they're they been, don't, they just don't choose it very often now yes. that they've kind of been into it now, you know, and our nine year old was at a family lunch last summer. Um, would have been, it would have had to been less. So yeah. maybe this summer, maybe this summer. <laughs> Anyways, she, you know, she had her, she had her plate. She didn't choose anything that was, you know, there was mac and cheese available and we've had enough conversation. She, I think in her brain, what was going on was that she knew if I choose this now, these are the conversations we've had. If you choose this now, how are you going to feel later? And do you want to feel like that later? And she's gotten really aware now and we've really tried to work on bringing out her sense of self, like listen to your body. If you eat those donuts, if you have that mac and cheese, Mm -hmm. that's fine. Do you want to feel the way you're going to feel in a couple of hours? 
And there's been times she's chosen that. Absolutely. Right? There's been times she's chosen it and felt perfectly fine. Yep. There's times she's chosen it and puked in the middle of the night. Yeah. Both of those things have happened. Yeah. Um, not from any kind of guilt or shame, but literally yeah. this, just physically like, too much just, sugar. It, it made her feel terrible. Yeah. And we had to, you know, sit up with her and pet her back and say it's okay. I think the important thing is we controlled what was in the RV. Mm -hmm. We controlled what was in the house when we returned home to Kansas City. We have a home base. We have a full-time home in Kansas City. Right. Um, this is one of those, those ones that people are like, how do you do it full-time? We don't. We don't do it full-time. We come um, back and spread out. <laughs> everybody take a corner of the house. Yeah. So in our home, Andy and I work for ourselves from home. Mm -hmm. We homeschool all five of our kids. That means almost every meal of their entire lives, they're eating with us. So it's what we keep in our home. If they go to grandma's, if they go to a birthday party, if they go to a friend's house, etc., I do not yet have that conversation. I go for the 10% of the time or 15% of the time that you're not eating here, do you? Yeah. And a lot of times they make they, choices where they take the bun off. Yeah. And I've seen They'll them. Just do it by themselves. We'll, we'll hear about, have about to it. Say we'll that. hear about yeah. it later. They're like, well, I took them out for McDonald's. Okay. But this one and this one took the bun off. Okay. Perfect. Like it's just, yeah. you know, so it goes. And so it was just, it's about what we bought, started buying for a house. We but initially we were house. able to do it for that little tiny space in the RV. Uh -huh. And we had to buy food often. Yeah. And so it was very much like, we have this little fridge. We need to upgrade to an RV with a large fridge of it. Yeah. Like that is <laughs> the, so. the only thing that I'm just like, oh my gosh, how do we? And with as much cheese, as much cheese as our family goes through, like literally a third of the, they just, they we got little dairy babies. I don't know, the cheese, yogurt, cottage cheese, all of the things. Like it's just, that is their jam. Um, so lots of Greek, Greek yogurt. The big things are the Greek yogurt. So we kind of just filled the RV. And by the time we got home, the food was bad. Oh no, the Oreos went bad. I don't know how these are nutrients. Oh, the nutrients. They, oh, I had to throw them away. They're covered in mold. Ew. Oh, oh, oh. And what we filled the fridge with was the was, better choices. Was the better choices. Yeah. A lot less treats. Yeah. Because we got the treats from the conference, right? Mm -hmm. Like they were like, we kind of got set up. I was not necessarily going to spend the money for all five of my kids to have a keto granola bar every day right. at that price. I'm just going to be honest. Like, yeah. so for me, it was very much so like, this is something, you know, if we're going on a hike, I might go get a box of granola bars to pack their little hiking packs of keto granola, of keto yeah. granola bars. If we're, you know, I might pack a little, um, you know, one of those, those little fat, those fat things that I like, the like almond butter, oh, fat, yeah. fatty bomb type things or whatever. I might go purchase those versus make stuff at home um, for special occasions. But I didn't keep all the package stuff, the, the treat stuff in our house. And so all of a sudden we kind of got home and it was a whole lot of whole fruits, whole vegetables mm -hmm. and meat. Yeah. And our kids love meat. We're Kansas City people. We love meat. Yeah. Our and two so, year olds just get into the package of salami and they'll yes. just carry a salami package around they until they're satiated. And then we have to find the salami <laughs> package before it's no longer cold. If I notice it's missing, then the search is on. Literally, there's times that Andy's like, oh shoot, the salami's, the salami's not in the drawer. Because he went in to get his little, we got <laughs> that pre-sliced. Charcuterie. Those, they get that charcuterie, like pre-sliced four different kinds of cheeses. And Andy all day grabs that and the salami with a little piece of cheese. And if that's missing, he's going, uh oh. And so we literally have to like ask the babies like, hey, where's like, where's this at? And it's, you know, Fritz runs around the house and leads us behind a chair somewhere yeah, and yeah. pulls it out all problems. Great, 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 great. It's so cold. All right. But like, th that's just what those are the snacks. Those mm -hmm. are the treats. Those mm -hmm. are the things. I, our kids, if we give them individual two good yogurts, act like they just won the lottery. They're mm -hmm. like our own in the little cups, like, cause we get the big thing of it. But like the little ones are really fun because they like sprinkle it with the ratio granola, bar, granola and fresh berries and sometimes some little chocolate chips. Like we've got a whole like parfait, like obsession as a family, <laughs> but it's a big deal. That's the new Moo Tubes. Uh-huh, right. I don't know if they remember Moo Tubes at yeah. this point. Like that's the new thing. Yeah. And so it very much so is that we, we capitalized and utilized a transition situation. in life. And yeah. I, and I, it doesn't have to be that you have to buy a 36 foot RV and stock a tiny fridge. Um, it can be lots of different things. And okay, so it can summertime be summertime or, yes. you know, New Year's or absolutely. School or, starting. Yeah. You know, we're going to, we're coming back from a vacation and we've got a, all the food went bad while yeah. we were gone. We're going to have to buy different things. Um, one of the best people for me as a resource to this 
And it really was actually, I can, I can say three things. You and I had that conversation. We bought the RV and I listened to Abby speak in real life for the first time. How Sakito um, came to the Orlando summit and had dinner as kind of a VIP meal that first night, um, the night before the, the kickoff. And I was able to sit with her. Yeah, actually I was like four people down from her and kind of was like, hi, um, we're thinking about doing this. And she has documented moving her kids into a ketogenic lifestyle and what it's done for their health, for their lives, for them as a family, for the health um, scares and things that she's had to come up against. Okay, my battery's 10%, so, and this video's 50 minutes long. <laughs> we can't go with one. each other, it is. Okay. But she, you know, she was sitting a couple seats down from me and eventually I kind of was like pulled her. I, 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 I had got a little, little spine to me, grew a little courage and said, can I ask you a couple questions? And she was willing to share what she did and what she went up against in order to allow her kids to live this lifestyle for the benefit of their own health and well-being. And some of the things that she said in that talk, just one-on-one -on -one, changed things for me. But going down a rabbit hole of her Instagram and her TikTok and really digging into all the, the resources that she had created for free. I just want to point this out. Literally was a resource for families for free. And I dug into as much of her information as possible and eventually got weird enough that I was like, I'm befriending you. Like, I want to be your real life friend. And she really was instrumental in answering a lot of questions and helping us deal with even some of the negativity that began to happen um, as we shared in our own lives. Our kids ate on Instagram. Um, Y'all, switching a regular tortilla for a low carb tortilla or chickpea based tortilla is not going to kill them. I mm. promise. I promise. Our kids having an almond flour birthday cake versus white flour, they're going to survive it. And so just some of the ridiculousness of it all but really finding someone who had already done it so much better and at such a higher level than our goal was to even hit. If yeah. that makes sense. Like they're like, if I can do it up here, you can do it here. Yeah. And it gave us kind of that belief, but it also gave us a resource. And so I think that um, sharing that she really was kind of that third part of that trifecta. Mm -hmm. And still I've heard her speak. I, we got to hear her speak at KetoCon. She spoke again at the Orlando summit. And there were things at both, even though they were the same talk that I took with me and meant, man, I can't wait to get home because that's something I'm gonna remember forever. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm going to be able to apply with our kids tomorrow. And that is a very, very cool thing when you have a resource and you have a community the way we have is to be able to draw on the strength of others who have already kind of hit the goal that you're currently in process of, mm -hmm. and to find somebody who's willing to say, this is how you get through that minefield and keep your limbs. Mm -hmm. They're on the other side of it. And if they're willing to they look back the way. and help you take those steps so you avoid blowing yourself up, and they, they probably took a few hits. They probably had a few scares. They probably had a couple times where it went off right here and they went, I, I lost a thumb. But they're on the other side of it and they're telling you, you don't have to go through what they went through but you can have what they have. Mm -hmm. And she was and is, she is kind of that person in my life. And I don't know if she understands kind of the impact that that made, but that conversation was life-changing. Mm -hmm. And so RV helped to do it. You having that conversation with me to say, to know and not to do is not to know right. was kind of kind of the short answer on that. We, we know better for our kids and we know the impact long-term of their health. We've got to do something now and changing the way we had the conversation, changing the way we spoke about things, and then getting home and just going, okay. How are, we gonna, how are we gonna set up the environment? We're gonna get this. So yeah, I mean, there are grapes in our house mm -hmm. and there are, I'm trying to think of some of the other things that I've seen people like wig out about watermelon, whatever, oh, and I'm going. Raspberries, as many raspberries as our toddlers can eat. My kids aren't gonna get childhood obesity and type two diabetes from- On raspberries. From raspberries or right. celery or, right carrots or radishes but like we don't going, but we don't have soda available to them in the house they've never I don't, literally yeah. I, my daughter won a coca-cola zero uh, during a swim thing like they like contest, dove a like contest. it was a contest at yeah. swim practice for conference qualifiers jumped in and they like got to get stuff from the bottom of the pool and she got and she went mom is it okay if i have this and i'm like do you want to try that and she was like i do and i'm like okay 
And she was like, this is my very first Coca-Cola. And I went, and all her friends were like, what? And she's like, it's so great. She had that in the fridge. <laughs> she took like two weeks to drink it. <laughs> Literally like two weeks. Like this open, Why? flat, disgusting Coca-Cola Zero. But she would have like a sip or two a day. Oh. And it was so exciting that it was just, and I'm going, it should be a novelty. Mm. Eating anything with that much sugar, having an ice cream sundae covered in a brownie covered in shouldn't be just a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was in my life for a long time. It should be a novelty. I'm not wanting to keep those novelty experiences from our kids, but the 85% of the time that food is just food, that it's not the special occasion, it's not the celebration, it's it's just just, fuel. It's just lunch. Mm -hmm. It's just a Tuesday lunch. We're gonna keep it as tight as we can. And with our kids, low carb means low carb swaps, and an access to far more fruits and some vegetables that we don't necessarily participate in. Mm. My kids love sweet potatoes. They, we do not restrict sweet potatoes. I have had a few sweet potatoes this year hormonally on purpose, like literally as part of like understanding and trying to figure out my cycle and utilizing that for my hormones with coaching. So like there are a lot of things that people are go, well, that's not that. I was like, and my kids aren't keto and mm. They're not trying to be in a metabolic state of ketosis. We do choose whole food, whole food sources, Mm -hmm. 90% of the time. And we have, if they're going to have a snack, it's going to be a low carb and sugar free snack. And so those are those swaps. They need a drink. They know they got to drink water Mm -hmm. to start. Yes. They're going to start with water. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if we go to a restaurant and they say, mommy, I want to get a cheeseburger. uh, Y'all, I'm not keeping buns in my purse. I have. have. (laughs) You have done that. I have done that. (laughs) it's a rule of thumb it's a rule of thumb <laughs> they want to have an occasionally and I say do you want to order it with or without the bun they say can I do the bun absolutely we're out to dinner this is a special it's, it is if we're if seven of us are walking into a restaurant to it hasn't happened in a while while somebody else cooking <laughs> it's a special occasion absolutely and they say you know it comes with a drink it comes right. with a kid's drink for example and they say you know can I get one of the drinks I'm like oh, it's, it's included if that's something you want to do Go ahead and have the server give you a water first. And when you're done with your water, what happens to that drink at the end? They order that Minute Maid lemonade or whatever it might and be. Half done. It's, and it's they drink that half, much yeah. of it because they drink water first. Yeah. Yeah. These are just basic things that if I had as tools as a child growing up, I might not have been where I was four years ago. And once I was out of my parents' home, I was going to say that we're going to wrap this up. For the first 18 years, it's kind of on them. Uh, was just, there was things that I started to do maybe as a, as a teenager or whatever that one, the habits that I had implemented and the weight that I had gained and the lifestyle I was living and the access of food I had in my house. I was like, as I could, I could play the blame game all day long when it's my life and I was on my own and I was making my own dis- decisions. I carried all those habits with me and took them on as my own choices. And so my thought process is my kids get the opportunity to take on all these habits as their own choices someday as young adults and adults. I just want to set them up for as many of the habits that they can carry into adulthood Mm -hmm. as possible that make them feel like they're empowered to live a life wholly in their body in a way that is honoring to themselves, that a ways in ways that are empowering to who they are and that they have a love and a trust with how they know their body feels, that they have communication open and can listen to their body's responses. And I think that just some of the things that were lacking from my journey, I wanna armor them with now. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't have to be anything crazy. For us, it was, you know, walk a mile, see a mile on a lot of this, small steps. Little conversations. Yes, if you're struggling with the idea that you can't control 85% of your kids' meals, how many do you get to help choose? How many do you pack? How many do you pay for? Just choose those. What do you pay for? Yeah. That's a, that's a question to, if you're paying for it, I think you can ask those questions. If it's coming out of your pocket, I think you can say, these are, this is how we're going to do this. And I think that even if it's, you know, you're just in charge of dinner, start with dinner. Start with dinner. If you're doing this as a single parent or somebody who's joint parenting um, with someone who's not in your household, I think that you do what you can in your household. And so I think that it's one of those things it's you can only control what you can control, but we can control the things that we can control. Yeah. And so it's kind of this, you know, this uh, cognitive dissonance that can happen sometimes where we feel like if we can't go all in, if we can't do all of it, then it's not worth doing any of it. Mm -hmm. 
But, you know, it might just be that at mama's house, they just, we don't do Pop-Tarts. I haven't gotten Pop-Tarts. It's not something I buy. Yeah. And I think that those kinds of things can be conversations, not about bad food or good food. Mm. Is this keto food or not keto food? Is this healthy food or not healthy food? Is this okay for me to eat or am I not allowed to eat this? All those are going to mess you up. They're going to mess you up here for a long time. And let's not do that to our kids. I think that for us, it's how do you feel your best and how do we choose foods? And how can we support you for yes. your best? And how can, yeah. Yes. And and the foods that we have access to, any and all of us can eat. Yeah. And I think that that's big too. It's, it's not that this is mommy's food or daddy's food or only for the babies or only for, it's all all whole food choices that, and the snacks all of us have access to. I don't necessarily do as many as the kids might do, but they're all things that I could eat too. And so I think that also not having like, it, there was a long time that it was like mommy's, mommy's special stuff, mommy's mm. special chocolate or mommy's special. And, and I don't think that helped anybody in it either. And so just changing those things, do what you can do. And, you know, I think over time, arming our kids with the things that we wish we had when it comes to our relationship with our body and our relationship with food. And that means asking ourselves hard questions. That means really unpacking and dealing with the things that led uh, me, me to where I was and saying, what do I wish someone had said to me at eight? What do I wish 15 year old me knew? What do I wish I understood about listening to my body and its responses that I never got to access through sugar cravings and binge eating. Mm. And I think that those kinds of lessons don't have to come from a place of diet culture. Right. They can come from a place of learning to love ourselves wholly and, and fully in a way that honors, honors who we are and honors the life we get to live and the one and only body we get. And that is a big part of the conversation too. Is this the one we got? You're not trading it in for a new model. This is, this is the one we get to love on and take care of and be proud of through all of our experiences in life. So I hope that my four girls and my little boy take away the best of the best things from this and anything that I don't do quite right or anything we mess up on, I hope they can love us and forgive us for. And know that there's gonna come a time where they've gotta own that part of their journey, but I've gotta set them up to win.